Hi everyone. In this video I am going to demonstrate confirmatory factor analysis or CFA using Stata command syntax. So Stata does include a graphical user interface or GUI that's pretty easy to use. Basically you can just draw out your CFA model and run your analysis based on that drawing. However, the GUI can be somewhat unwieldy in cases when you are testing more complex models. So having a good understanding of the Stata command syntax can go a long way in making life easier when testing more complex models. Now the examples that I'm going to be covering uh, are coming from the Stata Structural Equation Modeling Reference Manual. Uh, the first example will be a one-factor model. The second example will, will be a two-factor model. And um, you can actually access the, the uh, manual at this link right here. And I'm going to include that link underneath the video description. The data associated with those with the uh, two demonstrations are uh, linked up inside the manual so you'll need to go to that link uh, and then you can follow the the procedures that I lay out uh, during the course of this video in order to obtain the data. I do want to mention a couple of other things. First off, uh, I am still currently working with version 14.1. I know that uh, there's a newer version of Stata out there. Um, nevertheless, the commands uh, that I'm going to be covering will work in either version uh, of Stata that you are working with. And additionally, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the syntax uh, associated with running the analyses and generating relevant output. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on interpretation of the results. Uh, however, I am going to include a link underneath the video description to a PowerPoint that provides a lot more detail concerning interpretation of the results. So let's go ahead and get started and if you'll go, follow the link underneath the video description to this manual uh, and open it up, you can scroll down and we're going to go to example one right here. And so when I click on example one and go to it, you'll notice that right here it says use HTTPS and then a uh, link. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, from the manual and open up Stata and go to the command line and paste it in. And when I hit enter, um, you'll see that our data is now imported. So right over here you can see that we have the variable names for this first example. So it's just X1 through X4. And then when we go under uh, data and go to data editor and open it up right here, you can see there we have X1 through X4. So the first model that we are going to test uh, is this one-factor model. And basically you can see that we have x1, x2, x3, and x4. Again, these are our measured variables in the data set. You'll notice that we have this oval with x included right here, capital X. And that is the latent variable. That's the single factor that is um, proposed to account for variation in x1 through x4. So you'll notice that X is pointing at X1 through X4 uh, through single-headed arrows. Now down below you'll notice that we have these circles right here and these are reflecting measurement errors. And uh, another term for it in the context of our CFA is uniqueness. So a uniqueness basically encompasses or incorporates both um, random or unreliable variation and variation that's specific to each of the indicators but yet is not accounted for by uh, our X latent variable. So to test this model, we'll go back into Stata and I'm going to open up the do file editor by clicking on this box right here. That's the icon for it. And so when it opens up, we just basically have a space where we can type in our syntax. And the basic syntax to run our model starts off with the SEM command and then we'll uh, create a little space right there and then we're going to type in uh, inside parenthesis x1 space x2 space x3 space x4 so these are the variable names as they are appearing in the data set so uh, currently in this example they're just using very nondescript names uh, so uh, you won't always be using the words or uh, the terms x1 through x4 you'll be using whatever names of the variables that you have in the data set then following we will type in 
a less than sign followed by a hyphen which produces an arrow and then our capital X right there and then in parenthesis. Now just keep in mind that the first letter of any latent variable in your analysis needs to be in caps so that's why the X right here is in caps. Okay so now if I highlight all of this and click on uh, the execute selection do right there you'll see that the analysis is run and it goes it gives you a table of coefficients so this first table of coefficients right here you'll see we have a column of coefficients and in particular you'll notice that these values right here these are unstandard unstandardized factor loadings and so for x to x1 the factor loading is actually fixed to one um, so and this is done in order to scale the latent variable x in relation to x1 so there's no significance tests associated with that but the remaining factor loadings all have significance tests you'll see that down in this section of our output we have the variances associated with our uniquenesses and then we also have the variance of our latent factor that's given right there now if after running your analysis uh, right here you want to obtain standardized estimates we can easily do that if we go under our do file editor right here I can just type in SEM comma and then type in standardized and then enter uh, or actually highlight it and then run it you'll see that now I get my table of standardized estimates so you can see right here that we have our standardized factor loadings for x1 x2 x3 and x4 we again have our variances associated with the uniquenesses and then the variance of our standardized latent variable is, is uh, naturally going to be one now additional output that we typically request is going to be uh, the goodness of fit for our model. So to do that we can use the estat post estimation command. We'll type in estat and then we'll type in gof and then comma and then we can type in stats and then inside parenthesis I'll type in all and in parenthesis there. So now when I highlight this and run it you'll see that we get our goodness of fit statistics. And again I'm kind of blowing through this pretty quickly but uh, a lot of this a lot of the details regarding interpretation is contained in the PowerPoint that's linked underneath the video description but nevertheless you can see right here that the chi-square goodness of fit test is non-significant that's an indicator that we have a good model fit the RMSCA is zero and the peak close test is uh, non-significant both of those are indicating that we have close fit to the data in this case uh, the CFI and TLI, both of those values are around 1, also indi indicating very good fit. And then our standardized root mean squared residual is 0 .007, again, indicating a uh, good model fit. Uh, one additional piece of uh, fit information that we might want to request um, are the equation level goodness of fit uh, uh, indices. And in particular, we can request the R-square values, which in the context of our CFA would be, refer would be um, uh, interpreted as communality estimates. So I'll type in ESTAT, and then I'll type in EQGOF, and then when I highlight this and uh, click on Execute Selection, you can see that now we have our uh, equation level goodness of fit and in particular we have our R square values so these are the um, the communalities and we can interpret these as the proportion of variation uh, in each of our indicator variables that's accounted for by our latent factor okay so before we go to the uh, second demonstration I do want to sh show you a couple of other things first off uh, you know you can theoretically just type all this uh, into your do file editor and you can certainly run it as a batch um, just by highlighting and clicking on um, execute and you can see that now all of the commands have been executed as one batch right there um, additionally in this line right here the the arrow I mean we could have specified our model uh, in the following way we could have said SEM and then we could have X right here and then an arrow and then X1 space X2 space X3 and space X4 and that would have worked uh, equally well so if I just highlight that and run it you can see that that works out well okay so now let's proceed to our second example so if you go back to um, the manual 
and scroll down to example three it says two-factor measurement model so I'm going to click on that right there and in this case we are uh, essentially going to be uh, testing our two-factor model so I'm going to highlight this uh, link right here and copy it and paste it into our um, command line and there you go and so now you can see that we have items that would be associated with two uh, latent factors so you can see that we have uh, items measuring affective arousal that's items one through five and then we have items that are measuring cognitive arousal which is um, uh, C1 through C5 so if you look in the uh, manual, you'll see that basically we have, again, items A1 through A5 loaded onto an affective factor and then C1 through C5 onto this cognitive factor. You'll notice, too, that we have a, a covariance between those latent factors. And the code that they uh, provide for you, um, you'll see that it looks very similar to what we had before. In this case, you'll notice that our arrow is pointing uh, from the latent variable to each of the indicator variables right here for the affective factor and then for the cognitive factor right here it's pointing to C1 through C5 or if we put uh, A1 through A5 on the left and then uh, affective on the right we would have the arrow pointing in the opposite direction um, so either way it works uh, just fine so let's go ahead and run this analysis we'll go back into our do file editor right here and I'll just go ahead and specify our new model so I'll type in SEM and my preference generally is to have the uh, indicator variables on the left and the latent variables on the right I, that's just the, the way that I think probably because I I'm used to using Levine and and uh, Lisserl and that's kind of the the general way that uh, the equations are structured so in this case right here I will type in a1 space A2 space A3 space A4 space A5 right there and then I'll type in my arrow right there and then we'll type in affective and keep in mind that that first because this is our latent variable that first letter has to be in caps then we will um, basically space right here and I'll uh, type in C1 space C2 space C3 C4 and C5 with my little arrow there and I'll type in cognitive here and so now when I highlight all of this and run it I get uh, my output so again you can see that uh, it's there's a little bit more to it in this case because we have 10 items and uh, basically two factors so in this particular case right here we have our unstandardized uh, factor loading so again that first factor loading associated with each of those factors are, is fixed to one and then we have our unstandardized loadings that are given uh, right here for the affective and then for the cognitive um, indicators and when we scroll down you can see that we have uh, the variances for all of those uniquenesses that are given down here you'll notice that we have the variance for the affective factor the variance for the uh, cognitive factor that's given and then right here the covariance between those two factors so uh, just keep in mind that by default uh, the covariance is going to be added between those latent factors and that's pretty conventional in um, many CFA models that are tested. You'll also see too that we have a Z value that's given and a P value so we can test whether there's a significant uh, covariance between the affective and the cognitive factor and so that appears to be the case based on the results that are given here. Okay so it, let's go back to our do file editor. I want to show you another um, thing to consider too. Um, and that is, in some cases, you may have long lines of code that you uh, need all connected, and so it maybe wraps around. And so you're going to need to make sure to let Stata know uh, that that's the case. So let's say, for instance, um, that I need, um, let's just say, for instance, I want this uh, part of our code and, uh, and this part of our code to be on separate lines but yet still connected so I can type in SEM I'll type in a1 a2 a3 a4 and then uh, and then a5 excuse me uh, a4 and then a5 right here uh, and in parenthesis so if I create a space and then I use three forward slashes right here then start on the next line and inside parenthesis I'll do the uh, remainder actually let me just copy this 
because I'm talking and trying to write at the same time and it gets a little tricky so I'll just uh, paste that in right there and then we'll go ahead and do the same I'll just copy all of this and paste it down here just to minimize mistakes and so now these three lines right here are allowing me to continue uh, the command on the next line so if I highlight all of this and click the execute selection you can see that all of that everything works out exactly the same so again in those cases where you have long lines of code that need to be connected across uh, lines then you need to then uh, you can use these three forward slash um, uh, in order to uh, connect the lines. Just make sure that you're not uh, butted up against the, the last character on that same line. So keep that in mind. Okay, so if we want to generate standardized estimates, we can type in SEM again, followed by standardized. And if we highlight that and click on uh, the execute selection right there, now we get our standardized factor loadings and so forth. So um, you know, there's the, the standardized factor loading for affect for A1, A2, and so forth. When we scroll down, we still get our uh, variances for the errors. Uh, in this case, though, because we have a standardized solution, these are basically referring to uh, 1 minus the communality, which, so it's basically the proportion of variation associated with each of the indicators that's not accounted for by their respective uh, latent factors. And then you can see down here that we have the variance for affective and cognitive. Both of those are uh, uh, set to 1 right there. And then this covariance is given right here uh, is basically the correlation between the affective and cognitive factors. And once again, you can see that we have a significant relationship between those two factors. And if we want to obtain our um, equation level goodness of fit, uh, we can do that very easily. We'll just uh, type in uh, ESTAT and then we'll type in EQGOF. And if we highlight that, then we end up, once again, and run it, we end up with our those uh, R square values, which are going to be the communalities associated with each item. So, um, And the communalities are going to reflect the proportion of variation accounted for in each of the items by uh, their, in this case, their respective latent factors. And uh, finally, We'll go ahead and add in uh, the post estimation command to obtain our fit statistics. I'll type in ESTAT and then uh, we will type in GOF and then comma and then stats and then side parenthesis all right there. And when we highlight this and click on uh, execute selection, now we get our uh, goodness of fit uh, statistics. So you can see right here the chi square goodness of fit test is statistically significant. So um, just kind of keep in mind that the chi-square test is impacted by sample size so it's oftentimes not surprising when this is significant even if there is uh, minor uh, um, problems with fit. The RMSEA is 0 .086 so that's not a particularly good finding it's, it's I would say it's kind of on the margins of you know acceptability. Uh, the P-close test is statistically significant so basically our model is deviating uh, we would interpret that to mean that our model is deviating significantly from uh, a close fit value of 0 0.05 and then you can see our CFI and TLI both of those are indicative of good model fit and the standardized root mean square residual is indicating uh, good fit so we have kind of a mixed bag right here uh, but for the most part the model seems reasonable uh, in terms of uh, fit now if you wanted to explore possible um, you know modifications uh, you can also request modification indices using another uh, post estimation command so if we type in estat and then we type in m i n d i c e s right there and highlight it and then click on uh, execute now we get modification indices so these are basically proposed uh, modifications in terms of added parameters that might improve the fit of your model um, just kind of keep in mind that these are empirically based only. They're not derived from any kind of logic or theory. This is just sort of a raw uh, kind of um, estimate of, you know, 
whether or not adding in certain parameters might uh, improve the fit of your model to the data. So you want to use these very sparingly, if at all, and you certainly want to make sure that if you decide to make modifications to your model, that you make it based on uh, theoretical grounds um, as well, because that's, that's going to be pretty important. But just to kind of give you an example, let's just say that I'm looking at these FITS uh, indices right here, and Basically, a value of that's, uh, that exceeds 3.84 would be considered uh, a possible uh, uh, change that might re uh, represent a significant improvement in fit. And you can see right here that all of the modification indices would meet that threshold. So, we, but we might just uh, say, well, let's let's just uh, choose one uh, as a possible modification. Uh, let's say that uh, right here, E3 and E5. Let's say the error covariances. Um, you know, if we added in a covariance between uh, the errors for A3 and A5, we might uh, obtain a um, substantial improvement in fit. Uh, and so you can see again, this is exceeding that 3.85. And so if we wanted to add that into our model, then again, we would want to make sure that there's some justification apart from just the empirical um, uh, suggestion that it would improve fit. So let's just say for argument's sake that A3 and A5 happen to be uh, negatively worded items and that maybe by, you know, we wanted to, um, to add those to our model. Um, in order to specify uh, that uh, that error covariance. So to do that, what we'll do in this case is we'll go back into our uh, do file right here. And I'll, what I'll do is I'm just going to copy this and go down here and paste it in. We only need to make one minor change, uh, and that is that if we want to add in covariances, we can type a comma, and then following that, we'll type in COV. And in this case, we'll type in uh, e dot uh, a3, which is the um, the first variable. So this is the error term associated with the a3 variable. And then we'll type in uh, a, uh, an asterisk right there. And then we'll type in e dot a5, excuse me, right there. And we'll in parenthesis right there. So now when I highlight all of this and I run the analysis, again, we have our, uh, our unstandardized estimates that are given in this table. And at the very bottom of the table, now you'll see that we have the covariance between uh, the errors for A3 and A5. So this is the, the uh, covariance estimate. And you can see right here that there's a significant relationship between the errors for A3 and A5. And then basically all of the uh, other uh, post-estimation commands and so forth are still in play. Uh, I'm not going to go through each and every one of those right now, uh, but you can still request the overall model uh, fit statistics. You can request you know, your standardized estimates and your equation level fit and so forth. So at any rate, um, that is going to conclude this video demonstration. Again, if you check underneath the video de description, you'll find um, the link to the PowerPoint that goes into more detail on the interpretations. I'm also going to include a link to a do file that I've put together uh, if you want to study the code a little bit more uh, closely. So at any rate, that, that concludes this video demonstration and thank you for watching.